Hi, hi, Shepherd's Pie. Greetings from the Philippines. Welcome back to the channel. Thought we'd have a little walk and talk today about the new uh, visa directive that has been issued by the uh, Philippine immigration people. Now, I'm a bit late to the party on this one because there's been a, uh, quite a few vloggers who've been uh, talking about this because it's important. It potentially affects a lot of people. Now, as I say, a lot of people have been speculating about what it means going forward, whether it means anything. So, I thought I would give you my views on the subject because I think I know where this is going. I think I know what is going to happen next. I think I know what the future does hold. And why do I say that? Not because I've got any inside information. Not because I know anyone in the uh, Bureau of Immigration or I've spoken to anyone in the know. But because I've seen this all happen before. Not in the Philippines. But I saw it happen in Thailand. I saw it happen in Cambodia. I think I know what's coming next. And it's not good news. <laughs> I can tell you that now. But it's not terrible news either. Now I'm not going to try and scaremonger anyone on this. Because uh, that's not my game. But equally I'm not going to tell anyone uh, not to worry about it because uh, things are going to change. There will be implications for you. I'm certain of that. Because as I say, I've seen this before. I've seen how it starts and I've seen how it ends. Although that's not strictly true because the visa's always dynamic. I've seen how it is today in other countries. Doesn't mean it will be the same uh, in a couple of years time. But as I say, I've seen a lot of people talking about this. A lot of people saying, you know, it's, um, it's the beginning of the end, or it's nothing to worry about. And I've chatted with a few expat friends about this. And to be honest with you, a lot of them seem to be in denial. Because I saw this coming a few months ago. As soon as they did away with a six month visa, I said to a few people, right, won't be long before the 36 months has gone. And they were like, no, 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 that won't happen. You know, no, no, they need us in the Philippines. That's why I did a video a couple of months ago about, you know, um, do expats overvalue themselves and what they bring to the table? Because a lot of expats over here feel like, you know, the Philippines could not survive without them. And there's no way they'll uh, do away with the visas or make it more difficult for us to stay here long term. And uh, I said then, I think they're wrong. And I'm certain they're wrong now. <laughs> because uh, things change. It's inevitable. And they're going to change here. I'm certain of it. Because as I say, this is how it starts. They scrapped the six month visa. Now there's a directive out that uh, they're going to ask more questions when you go and renew your visa. Find out more about you, your financial situation, what your intentions are long term, etc. And that's happening. Now up until now, I've used the visa agency in uh, Dumaguete to get my visa for me. So I've never actually gone to uh, the immigration office and done it manually. But I resolved last time that I was going to do it online. But now they've had the new changes, I thought, no, I'll go to the visa place and do it in person in immigration, cut the agency out and see what they ask me so I can talk about it on the channel. Trouble is, I went to go there and do that yesterday and the queues were ridiculous. You know, I've never seen anything like it because the visa agency I use is right next to the immigration office. So you see the queues. There's always a few in the morning, but the afternoons are dead. But we went there yesterday to do mine and um, 
really mean it's a two, three hour wait. So I knocked it on the edge. But I got talking to the guy who works there and I said like, you know, what's this queue about? And it's because they're asking more questions. The interviews are more uh, intensive. They're asking people things and they're taking notes. So it slowed it all down. So uh, it's a definite thing in terms of this uh, more vigorous uh, interviewing when you go to uh, renew your visa. Am I worried about it? Absolutely not. Can I understand why they're doing it? Totally. Because as I say, I've seen it before. It's exactly what happened in Thailand. You know, when I was there for the first few years, you could just do visa runs. In every three months, you could uh, cross the border, walk into Thailand, walk into Laos, walk into a river, walk straight back in again with a new arrival visa and arrival which you could extend for a month at the immigration and you were good to go. And people did it all the time. They were there for years just crossing the border and coming back in again. But then the rumour started spreading. The directors came out. You'd be asked more questions when you tried to come back in. They would start turning people away. Your visa wasn't guaranteed. And then before you knew it, over a couple of years, you know, it was only so many times a year you could cross the border and come back in, etc. And the visa runs started to death. You couldn't do it anymore. You just couldn't do it. Now people got round it. I got round it. Instead of walking across the border and walking straight back in again, you went away for a few days. You went away for a week or whatever. But even doing that, it got to the stage where I was being told by the immigration people that I had to be careful, I had too many stamps. They couldn't guarantee that I'd be let back in next time. I mean, they were good as gold to me, the visa people, the immigration people in uh, Pizzanulo. They said they'd always stamp my visa if I came for an extension, but they warned me that I had so many stamps that uh, I might not get back in one day. And then there's nothing they could do. Advise me to get a new passport, do a bit of traveling around other countries for a few weeks. And it's never been the same since then. You know, you can't, you just can't do the visa runs anymore. It changed. It was the same in Cambodia. It used to be the easiest country in the world to go to, you know, long term. You just go in, you had these agencies at the airport, you could get a one year business visa, about $300, $200, whatever it was. You were good to go for a year. Didn't have to start a business, didn't have to register anything. You know, it was just really easy. But they did away with them. The same thing's going to happen here, I'm sure of it. For a number of reasons. Now I'm going to speculate what those reasons are. I am certain that the visa system is going to change. I'm dead sure the 36 months won't be a thing in the not too distant future. But why they're doing it, I have my suspicions. Whether they're right or wrong or not, you know, only time will tell because uh, it's obvious there's been a sea change in the approach, but what they're trying to achieve is anybody's guess. So I'll have a guess now. <laughs> I don't think they're necessarily trying to force expats out of the country or deter people from coming here and long-term tourist visas. I think there's a few factors at play here. I don't think any country likes the idea of being the easiest uh, attraction visa-wise. I think what's gone on in Thailand with the new tax laws and the fact that people are leaving to come to a place like the Philippines will have woken the Filipino government up to the fact that uh, some of the people coming won't necessarily be as financially stable as they would like. because a lot of people who are struggling for cash are leaving because of the new tax rules. But anyway, I think that's a factor potentially. I think the main factor is too many people out here are on the wrong visas. Now, I was watching a couple of videos the other day on this. People had gone to get their visas uh, renewed and they hadn't had problems. They'd just been asked questions, which they uh, weren't usually asked. They went into more detail. But both these guys were married. They were here with their wives. 
They've been here a number of years. One of them has been here for 12 years. Well, the reality is, he shouldn't be on a tourist visa. He should be on a married visa. So I think that's a huge part of this. They are trying to get people onto the right visas. Now, I don't blame these guys for not having marriage visas. As far as I'm concerned, it's down to the Philippines. I mean, if they make it so easy to get a tourist visa, what is the incentive of um, getting a marriage visa? Hello? Or a tourist visa? There isn't one really, is there? I mean, why are you? Because if you want to get a retirement visa over here, same as in Thailand. You've got a transfer, I think it's $1,600, into a bank account over here, and you've got to keep it in the bank account. Now that money's only guaranteed to a certain uh, percentage, I think it's like three or $4,000 if that. If the bank goes under or something, you can lose it. Or the other option is you've got to buy um, an Aconda over here, over a certain value. Or you've got to prove you have X amount of pension coming in. And not everyone can do these three things. And the question is, why would you want to necessarily if you can get a uh, tourist visa and just keep extending that? So I don't blame these chaps for doing it. But I can see why the Filipinos don't want them doing it. Because they would much rather have that money in a bank account or the condo sold or proof that people can financially support themselves and they're on longer term visas. Because it would be more beneficial for them, financially, the, gun, the country. You know, that's the reality of it. But, until they do something to motivate people to do that, for example, make it more difficult to get the tourist visas, then people aren't gonna transfer over onto the retirement visas or the marriage visas. And that's what this is all about, I think. I really do. They're gonna start making it more and more difficult to get a tourist visa for the purpose of moving people onto the right visas. Married people getting married visas, retirement visas, etc. Because it makes sense for them. And that is potentially gonna make things more difficult for people like myself who uh, were planning on sticking on the old tourist visas for 36 months. But does it worry me? Absolutely not. Because one thing that I've noticed over here since I got here, that the Philippines, hello, hello. is very short on is uh, visa fixers because there's been no need for them the visa regulations are so easy over here you don't need fixers and that's what you're going to witness i think over the coming months as the visa regulations become tougher and it's not going to happen overnight i'm not exactly sure how they're going to do it i mean there's a number of ways they might not they might keep it at the 36 months, but bring in a rule that if you're married, you can only be here for six months continuously or something before you have to transfer over. Uh, I don't know what they're gonna do, but it's quite obvious that the moves are in place to do it. So anyone that tells you, oh, don't worry about it, we've been here before, it's not gonna happen, I genuinely think they're wrong. There will be changes. It's gonna get tougher. You're gonna have to prove more things theoretically and the tougher they make it because not everybody is going to be able to afford you know to meet the financial criteria that they might introduce but that's part of the part that's, that's part of the intentions of doing it isn't it i mean at the end of the day they want people here from the west or whatever foreign country spending money if you're one of these people that lives over and you live like a filipino and you live you know you're only spending what a Filipino spends you living for three or four hundred dollars a month. You know, power to you if that's what you want to live. But that's what, what the Philippine wants. They don't really want you here in that sense. Because you're not contributing financially 
any more than the average Filipino. That's not what they're looking for. That's why all these countries have, you know, minimum financial requirements. You know, you've got to have £18,000 a year in a bank or equivalent in a pension in Thailand. Cambodia, I think it's a lot lower. I think it's $800 a month or something like that. I don't think they necessarily check on it. But the point is, I'm certain there is going to be a move towards that over the coming months, coming years. It won't be overnight. It will start with more questioning. It will start with more suggestions that people are um, going to be turned away. And then some people will get turned away. Or they will change the regulations. It will go down to 24 months or a year or something like that. Now, is that really something to worry about? I don't think so. You know, we'd still be very generous if it was a year or uh, two years. God, these, these, these uh, crickets are getting loud now, aren't they? Um, you know, you can get around it. Still a lot easier than it is in any of the other Asian countries, you know, you can think of like Thailand, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, you know, one year visa. That'd be very generous, you know, if you could stay here for 12 months uninterrupted. But something is going to change. And this will see, which one I'm saying don't worry too much, it will see the birth of the fixers. And that'll be the next stage. Just like in Thailand, there are financial requirements to stay there for a year on a retirement visa once you get 50. There are requirements when you go to Cambodia, but there are fixers. The visa agencies over there know what they're doing. If you haven't got the money, no problem. They'll arrange documents to show that you have. You know, I've got no idea what percentage, but a huge amount of the expats over in Thailand are using fixers. You know, they provide proof you've got the required amount in your, they open a bank account for you, they transfer funds in. I don't know how they do it, I never used one because uh, I was never 50 years old, I, you know, when I was living there. If I went back, I don't know if I'd use one or I'd just transfer the funds over. Um, I'd probably transfer the funds over myself because it's good to have that money in the bank in case I have an accident or something like that in country. But uh, that's just me. But that will come next, that will come here, I'm certain of that. Any Asian country, when it's a poor country, when officials aren't paid very much, you know, there will be a birth of, uh, of uh, fixers, you know, that, that they will appear everywhere. Because that's one of the things I say surprised me, the visa agencies are not much good. I'm not gonna talk about my one or say, well, they provide a service, they're polite, but they really don't seem to know what they're doing. You know, every time there's a visa change, it seems to catch them by surprise. You know, I was watching the Filipino P with a guy on there, he's like, oh, we've spoken to his contacts and he's this and that. And Well, if they're such good contacts, you'd have known in advance, wouldn't you? Or maybe you did know in advance, just couldn't say anything. The point is they're not as on the ball, they don't appear to be, to be as on the ball as they are in somewhere like Thailand. They know exactly what's coming, you know, months in advance. And they start working on their contingency plans. That's why, you know, a lot of people, I mean, I've not looked into it because I'm not in Thailand now, but this business with, you know, the six months tax, <laughs> there's going to be ways around that. There will be accountants springing up visa people, ways to get around paying that. And I can guarantee it's the way the culture works over there. Anyway, we're not talking about Thailand, we're talking about the Philippines. So that's basically my take on it. Things are gonna change over here. And to be fair, they should change for the reason I said, you know, 36 months, you know, who goes on holiday for 36 months? The vast majority of people who are staying here for 36 months are living here. A lot of them are working. The Philippines, you know, and shouldn't be working. Filipinos are going to want to crack down on that. A lot of them are married. Get them onto married visas. A lot of them are retired. We'll get them onto retirement visas and get some income and that coming in. Get some structure to it. You know, the only benefit of the 36 month visas I can see now is they make a few quid out, you know, every time you're renewing them. So it will change. Things will change. Anyone who tells you that it's not is delusional. And I tell you, 
When that six months on, I mentioned it a few people, as soon as I found out the six month visa was coming to an end, I said, ah, this is the start of something. And everyone to a man was, no, 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 they'll never do that here. I said, just you watch, I said, just you watch. Things will change over the next few months. And then lo and behold, and I'm not saying it's my, I'm great, I know everything, I, I don't. I just could see what was happening because it's, it, it, it's the same old pattern. It's, uh, the Philippines is, is behind in terms of the visas. They're missing a trick. They tighten the rules, they could bring a lot more money in. But like I say, there will be the odd few expats who fall under it. I expect there'll be fixers who can get you around things. If you can't afford a fixer, if you can't meet the financial requirements, then hopefully you'll be all right, but you, 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 you probably should worry about it. But to be fair, you should be worrying about your financial commitments anyway, because uh, if you can't meet, because they're not very high, the requirements here. Wouldn't be surprised if they went up. So, but again, that is just speculation on my part. As I say, I'm not in the know. I've just seen this happen before. And I think the same thing's gonna happen here. There we go. So, there are gonna be changes to the regulations. It is gonna be a pattern. Things are gonna get more difficult. There will be more obstacles put in your way. There will be changes to the rules. All of that, I am supremely confident of. But I am also supremely confident that there will be lots of fixers that emerge who can sort these things out. There will be lots of offices that won't interpret the regulations as strictly as they need to, if you're polite, etc and you play the game. And they won't be that extreme. I have not got the feeling at all since I've been here that there is a movement to kick expats out the same way as I felt there was a movement to in Thailand. Because there was. There was a, a political movement to uh, reduce the number of expats there. You know, it was never powerful enough to really achieve anything. I mean, the majority of uh, the powers that be happy of expats there. That's why they just increased it to uh, 60 days on arrival. Because they can see their financial benefits. But there is a vocal element that does want to reduce the, uh, the uh, expat community over there. Don't get the same feeling over here. Not an expert on that though. I just think they want to tighten it up. They want to get a more uniform processing system and they want to get a few more quid out of the expat community that's moved over here. And why shouldn't they? I mean, at the end of the day, they're missing a trick if they don't. But anyway, there you go. I've uh, banged on a little bit more than I needed to really. I think I've made my point. Don't panic, there will be changes, but we'll get through it. Anyway, there we are. I'm gonna knock it on the head now. I'm gonna uh, ask you to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel, It'd be marvelous if you did. Whether you do, whether you don't, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, stay safe, be lucky. <laughs>